Hey everyone, welcome to the flip lesson on solving two-step equations with me, Mr. Whitehorst. As you watch the video, feel free to pause the video and rewind it as much as you need and rewatch it as many times as you need to until you understand the content. Before I teach you this though, I would like to present you with the image of a balance beam. Now, this is a regular balance beam as you can see, and it's balanced. The whole concept of a balance beam is to keep both sides equal. Okay, so if you don't make the sides equal, something like this happens. So if you put a fat guy on a seesaw with a little skinny guy, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the fat guy is going to fall to the ground and the little guy is going to fly up there and look upset. You don't want that. In life, you want to have the balance. What you do to one side of this balance beam you want to do to the other side. So what you want to achieve is something like this, where you have an equal weight on both sides and everyone's happy. See, look how happy the babies are. That's a good thing to have balance. So as I go through this lesson today, I want you to keep that image in mind, that you have to have both sides balanced. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Next, I present to you these three pictures. At some point in your life, regardless of who you are, you have probably lost something valuable to you in your house. Sometimes it's even in your pocket and you don't know where you put it. For example, the iPhone. I know for myself, I misplace my phone often. And when I say misplace, I mean I put it in my pocket and forget it's there. So what I do is I have to think in my mind what I did last when I saw it. And I retrace my footsteps to think of where I had it last. The same thing with a wallet. You might put your wallet down when you get home, then you go do a few things, and then a couple hours later you need your wallet, but you can't find it because you don't remember where you put it. So you think back and you retrace your footsteps and you retrace the things you did to go back to find where you put it. Or even your precious calculator. Sometimes in class you guys leave your calculator behind. Or even your homework or a book and you go to every classroom and ask your teachers, well, did you see it? Well, where did you see it last? You retrace your footsteps. So I want you to remember those two things as I go through the lesson today. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. And you always want to, whatever you did to get to a place, to find something that's missing, you need to retrace your footsteps. So that's all an equation is. An equation is basically when you have two sides balanced. And solving an equation is the process of backtracking, like with the phone or the wallet. In other words, you are doing the opposite of what you see, so that you can find something missing. So now, what I'm going to show you in this example is how to solve for x in this equation. You guys have been dealing with one-step equations, which means that it only required one step to solve it. These will require two, and it requires you to be able to retrace your footsteps. So I'm going to go to the board now and write this. So if my voice gets a little bit lower, you'll know why. So I want to solve for x. And what I need to first do before I try to do that, I need to consider what I have in front of me. Think of your phone missing. Where did you put it? Here's x. This is what's missing. That's my phone. I want to know what x is to make this true. So I know with my x, what I did to get there, the x is being multiplied by 3, and then after it's multiplied by 3, 5 is being added to it. So in order to find out what x is, I have to go backwards, and I also have to reverse those operations. So what will help me is if I make a second column. And the way that you read the second column is by starting from the bottom of the first column and going up. You're retracing your footsteps. But at the same time, you need to do the opposite of what you did before. So instead of adding 5 to undo this, I'm going to subtract 5. And then, instead of multiplying by 3, I'm going to divide by 3. 
If you follow that process, and you do both of those things to, one, to both sides, you will solve the equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract the 5. So on both sides, I subtract 5. I locate the 5 on the left side, and I subtract it. But since I did it to the left side, I have to also do it to the right. Okay? And that, the 5 and the minus 5, give me 0. So I'm left with the 3 times x. And 14 minus 5 is 9. So I took care of the minus 5. But now I have to do the divided by 3. So I showed division by 3, like this. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I have 1x, and that's what I want. I want to know what x is. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. That's my answer. But before I confirm that, I should always check. The way we check is we go back into the original equation. We substitute in our x value to see if it makes sense. Okay? So I'm going to make a separate section for my check, maybe over here. And you want the two sides to be perfectly balanced. So I take my original equation 3, x plus 5 equals 14. But instead of putting x, I'm going to put 3 in its place. And then following order of operations, I want to make sure that that makes sense. Well, order of operations tells me to multiply before I add. So I do 3 times 3 and get 9. And then 9 plus 5 gives me 14. If the two sides balance out, then you know you did the equation correctly, and you can confirm your answer is right. Okay? So what I want you guys to do, after you have copied that and looked at it, I would like you to try this example. Pause the video and try it. Okay, now that you have tried this, I'm going to show you what you should have done and see if your work matches mine. The first thing you should have done, if you need to, is create a reference chart. What did you do, and then how do you undo it? Well, look at where x is. What's being done to it? First, it's being multiplied by 4. And then, it's being added to 5. So to undo that, I start from the bottom and go up, but I also reverse the operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 5, and then I'm going to divide by 4. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So let's do that. I subtract 5, so I locate the 5. I subtract it, but I also do it to the right side. That gives me 4 times x equals 20. Okay, so I took care of the minus 5. Now I divide by 4. Divide both sides by 4 to give me 1x equals 5. But before I make sure that that's my final answer, I should always check. So I create a little separate section just to make sure that I'm right. And instead of putting x, I put 5. So I do 5 plus 4 times 5. That should equal 25. Always multiply before you add. 4 times 5 is 20. So 5 plus 20 equals 25. And I know 5 plus 20 is 25. And since the two sides are balanced, I did it right. I know my answer is right. So again, you may stop, rewind, and rewatch this video as many times as you need. Now you should fill out the Google document on the website.